What's up my fellow Cheebits? Today I'm here to bring you a anime review on Saikano. In this episode, we get a lot of drama. The drama that was set up with the ending of last episode comes full circle in this episode of Saikano. And we find out some really deep issues between Eri and Tomoya in this episode. We find out that there's a lot more drama that more than meets the eye when it comes to this episode. So let's dive into it. So from what we find out is, we find out that Tomoya, our otaku main male character, he got turned into an otaku because of Eri in the past. When he was a kid, he was very young, and he was going, I'm guessing, into elementary or middle school, he met Eri, and then they had a fun time, and she kind of converted him to being an otaku, from what I understood from the episode. And in the act of this, he began he began to love, you know, otaku-related things. He loved playing games, he loved playing, you know, sim simulator-type games that, you know, where you gotta get the girl, stuff like that. And as you saw him progress, he was having a lot of fun doing it but then this led to other issues down the road with him being converted as an otaku and you know J japan actually not having a really good standpoint when it comes to otakus there was a lot of issues that were going on we find out that in the act of him being converted by erity he kind of got shunned by everybody in the classroom and everybody in the school like all of his friends or guy friends shoved him away they didn't want nothing to do with him because he was like a, a creepy otaku or something like that and he was pushed away and and the reason why he did this like you know he was willing to go this far was because the only person he could rely on is Erity, someone that actually could understand his passion someone that understood him for why he loves certain things you know like anime games and stuff like that and when he went to go talk to her you know return the game back to Erity in the past she kind of turned him down she acted like she really didn't even recognize him or she didn't play, you know, otaku-related games or anything. And so to see that aspect, I understand now why our main male character would have some form of deep hatred or a grudge towards a person. Because, let's put this in perspective. Let's say you were in his, you know, shoes. Let's say you were in our main male character's shoes, and you at one point were, you know, a very active person. You love being, uh, playing sports, you know, communicate with friends and stuff like that. One day, this girl that you really respect decides to start talking with you you and she gets you into games she convert converts you into being an otaku and you're you're getting into these games and you're having fun and i have a lot of fun too i love playing games so i i don't know how it'd be if you know i couldn't play my games and so i know how fun and addictive games or anime can be and he got addicted and when you have this person that, you know, converted you into what you are and helped you out on the path of being an otaku, eventually when you go to talk to them and they kind of put up a different face or a mask or a wall to try to push you away, that's when your feelings get hurt. It's like your very soul or meaning got crushed of why you truly are. And I could see why he would be upset. And it destroyed a lot of his confidence when he was younger, where how he had to build up his, you know, self-confidence to where he could talk to other people normally. So I, I like getting to see this aspect of how it was kind of dived into, getting to find out more about the past between Eri and Tomia and Tomoya, and it was great. It was a really good episode to showcase this drama, and I feel like the way they showed it, I, I personally believe that Erdi should be the one to apologize. I mean, after what we witnessed in this episode, Erdi should honestly apologize. She, she really should, because the poor dude, he suffered. I mean, she states she suffered too because she wanted to apologize and she felt guilty, but if she felt so guilty, she shouldn't have said it in the first place. She shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't have succumbed to pure pressure and put up a fake mask or a wall, which has been been hinted and shown since the beginning of the series she shouldn't have put up a fake mask or wall to push away one of her friends just to have a good appearance in the public eye and so yeah what we finally get to find out the true personality of both of these characters and the true issues between them and it kind of doesn't get settled in this episode like the the main issues are really not settled in this episode it's like both characters just you know like, I guess, expressed themselves and let out their true feelings to each other, and then the drama's really not over. It's, like, just put on hold for now until later on. So, yeah, the drama's not really gone. It's not really done. It's not been settled. So, we'll have to see if, you know, Saikano can settle this in another couple episodes because, yeah, I think we only have about two episodes left, two, maybe three episodes left of this series. So, we're almost done. We're almost done with Saikano. Hopefully, he can do a lot of, you know, different things, answer a lot of questions, and handle, you know, the plot points and stuff like that. But we'll have to see. So, tell me your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or not wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.